Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. 7.37 on WMAL, where Washington comes to talk. It's Mornings on the Mall with Brian and Larry. We're going to continue our in-depth analysis and coverage of the Syrian situation and take your calls throughout the morning. And then, coming up at 8.05, we're going to hear from one of the stars of one of the most popular television shows on the air today, Duck Dynasty. He's Cy Robertson. He's just one of those crazy guys with beards. Uh, He'll be joining us then. I'm Larry O'Connor alongside Brian Wilson. All right, you know, we have 535 commanders in chief who are trying to decide what should be done in Syria. When, when they get together and they start, you know, talking about things and you hear all these different opinions, I want to turn to somebody who can just cut through the stuff. I want somebody who can just, you know, help me understand what should be done and why. And that's why we turn to Ambassador John Bolton. He's on the line right now. Mr. Ambassador, how are you today? Fine. Good morning. Glad to be with you. Oh, listen, you, there is, you, you, there's no ambiguity about what you think in this matter. You think that t- attacking Syria is a huge mistake. Yeah, I don't think uh, in the range of options for what a strike might look like, and that you can imagine them along a spectrum, but to simplify them into two, go big or go light, the go big option would uh, unquestionably tip the balance against the Assad regime in the ongoing Uh, civil war in Syria and give the opposition the advantage. I don't think that's in America's interest. I think the opposition is a mixed bag, and I think we risk simply trading one authoritarian leader with chemical weapons for another set of authoritarian leaders with chemical weapons. Uh, On the other side, if you go light, you will not accomplish the stated objective by the president to deter the future use of uh, weapons of mass destruction either by Assad or, even more importantly, by Iran. Ironically, a go-big strike might establish the deterrent uh, effect, but as I say, with what I think is an unacceptable cost of putting the opposition in power in Syria. All right, so the other thing that comes to my mind is that it, it was very clear yesterday, and it's been made very clear almost from the start here, that the president wants Congress to offer its opinion But it really doesn't matter what Congress thinks because he's leaving open the option to go forward and do it anyway. Yeah, I don't. I think if Congress actually voted against this uh, authorization to use force resolution, I don't think he would strike Syria. I don't think he has it in him. Even though Congress, by a resolution, a passing a law, can't amend the Constitution, the president's commander in chief authority is plenary, and uh, and the president would still have full constitutional authority to act if he wanted to. I just don't think Obama will do that. Uh, Ambassador Bolton, I, I, I'm watching the Secretary of State uh, 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 Kerry make his case yesterday, and of course, uh, so many people are comparing this to the build-up to the war in Iraq. Uh, President Bush, he staked his presidency, he staked his reputation, and he spent oh, a year and a half, almost two years, making the case for war against Iraq. And it seems to me that this president hasn't, he's sort of leading from behind internally here. He himself is not making the case. Was it odd to you that he's been sort of a bit player here? John Kerry, the Secretary of State, is really making the compelling arguments. Well, I don't think, I don't think Barack Obama is competent to be president on national security affairs, so he's probably best advised to stay out of the debate. <laughs> But, but to me, it simply underlines why there's no strategic thinking uh, in, in the administration. The president made a very ill-advised statement, the famous red line statement a year ago. It was in the midst of a presidential campaign. He didn't think through it. Uh, and now, twice, once in March, and now we've seen extensive use of chemical weapons by the Assad regime, and, he, and he's figured out he needs to respond to it. But that has to do with Barack Obama. That doesn't have to do with the United States. And if I may, let me address one argument, I think really the only argument yeah, that proponents of military I, I, force have here, and that's if... Congress votes this authorization to use force down, uh, it will be a devastating blow to American credibility. Yeah, please I address that, because I think that's the one compelling argument as well. I absolutely disagree with that. First, the president's credibility is already somewhere in the basement. Nobody in Iran, for example, thinks that there's any chance this administration will use force against Iran's nuclear weapons program. The way the president has handled the serious situation itself has uh, has uh, has rendered his credibility almost non-existent. So if Congress votes down the authorization, you have to ask yourself, what is the incremental cost 
uh, to U.S. credibility of that loss. And I think it's very small, and I think it's reparable when we elect a real president. There's no doubt this president has a uh, reputation for inattentiveness and weakness overseas. Uh, but the the rest of the world needs to understand Barack Obama is not the same thing as the United States. He is a weak, ineffective president. We are not a weak, ineffective country. What do you think, Ambassador, of the argument that if we don't do something about the use of chemical weapons here, then the next time, be it this president or perhaps a President Bolton in the future, if, if another uh, government uses chemical weapons, we've lost the case for taking action at that time? Well, it's a question of what it is you do. Uh, would the would the advocates of the use of force here contend that launching one cruise missile would establish that point? I think they would not. Right. But if you don't use really uh, a, a a a large amount of force here, you don't establish the deterrent the deterrent uh, structure either. In in the Cold War, when the U.S. looked at a possible Soviet conventional invasion of Western Europe, or the risk that the Soviets would conclude they could get away with the first nuclear strike, our answer, our doctrine was called massive retaliation. The president, he did it again yesterday. He talks about proportional, limited response. You do not establish deterrence with that. So it's not enough to say you got to have a strike. It's got to be a strike that proves the deterrence argument, and at least from what the president says. We don't know anything else to base it on. From what the president says, he's not talking about a strike that will create the structure of deterrence. And, in fact, it will make it worse with Iran yeah. because they'll look at what he does in Syria and say, is that all there is? And We're home free. A quick exit question. I've only got 30 seconds. But uh, you, you raised some doubts about the rebels on the ground and that there's some, you know, mixed, a mixed bag of groups there. We heard Senator McCain making the case yesterday. He said, I've met them. I know them. They're moderates. Trust me. What do you say to the senator? Well, you know, in the 1930s, Mao Zedong and the Chinese communists convinced a lot of Western journalists that they weren't really communists, they were just agrarian reformers. <laughs> well, that didn't work out so well. So I, 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 I don't, the, the opposition is riddled with terrorists. It's filled with Muslim Brotherhood supporters. Uh, I think if we saw Assad fall, we'd either see Syria break up or more conflict. And so at the end, end of the day, how do you think this this is going to go? Are you convinced by the evidence you've heard thus far, even though you haven't been a part of the, the classified briefings? Yeah, I, th I think unless you believe in the tooth fairy, who else used these chemical well, weapons sort of with the Assad opinion. regime? So do you, do you think that, that Congress ultimately will back the president or yes, not? Yes, look, the, the White House candy store is open here. Yeah, Whatever right, you yeah. want, you're going to get to get to get that vote. No doubt about it. Ambassador John Bolton, it is always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks a lot.